But it is true, I got this book of poems. They're like, they're like subversive kids' poems, right? They're not just, I mean, they do promote inclusion. That's true, they do. Equality. You know, and they don't make jokes at people's expense. You know, most actually, you know, that's not true. They often, you often find yourself with an unreliable narrator. And the idea is that the kid reading the poem is gonna be like, I think that guy's full of shit. You know, whatever. The kid equivalent is of that. And uh, you know, I got a couple of kids, and even though they've now maybe grown out of the demographic for which the book is intended, when I wrote these poems, they were right smack dab in the middle of that demographic, and I'd be on tour, and I'd call home and I'd read them the poems, and I'd just try and get them to crack up. And um, and it is true that I do write a lot of songs, you know, with fuck and shit and, and fucking, and not so much shitting. I think that's weird. That can be off putting in songs. But the king of, uh, you know, subversive kids' poems, uh, Shel Silverstein, he also wrote... He also wrote songs, uh, the best known of which is Boy Named Sue, which I'm not about to play, but... But he had a bunch of songs. He had songs about getting naked and doing it and just weird shit. I mean, it was the 70s, so it wasn't that weird, but... Um, but, uh, but so, I guess my point is I don't feel so bad. But I got these kids now, and they're... they're kind of excited about me having a book, but not really so much that, that um, you know, they won't say it, they won't admit it. Except every once in a while they go, well dad, now you finally maybe make some money. <laughs> you little asshole. <laughs> I am disinheriting you <laughs> from my imaginary fortune. <laughs> Speaking of imaginary fortunes, we have this song that Old 97s recorded years ago and I always thought it was pretty good and that people might like it. And uh, even though we did end up putting it on the record, one of my bandmates would never let us perform it live and I could never figure out what the fuck was his problem because I thought it was good and people liked it. And he finally, Ken, our guitar player, <laughs> he finally admitted recently, he goes, man, you know what it was that bought me about that song? By the way, I just made him a lot more coherent <laughs> in that impression than he is in that And I said, no, Ken, what was it that bothered you about that song that you torpedoed from the first day we recorded it? What was it? He goes, I don't know, man, it just sounded like a hit. <laughs> but I think back on if I had made money, what kind of person would I be? I'd probably just take it for granted. I probably would never have written any kids' poems. My kids would also be little spoiled assholes. And we'd be out on a yacht somewhere not appreciating it. So anyway, I'm glad I wound up here tonight with y'all. Thank you. Set me free. I've seen a lot of love go shower. Oh, that's not our love. You see, the problem was I was only 19. Yeah, I was only 19. I finished up with high school. seriously down but I was only 19 All I ever wanted to do was to lie around in bed with you but I was on the 19 I was on the 19 I was only 19, I was only 19. I've seen a lot of love go bad now, but that's not how I fare. Would have wound up, I swear, but I was only 19. 
team.